Welcome to Be Bold Branding. Today, we're chatting with Justin Stoddart, a multi-talented man whose credits include author, thought leader, inspiring speaker, host of the Think Bigger Real Estate Podcast, and last but not least, happily married to a beautiful, tall blonde and six gorgeous kids. His story is unique, and he's here to talk about something we're also passionate about, and it's actually positioning with your personal brand. I'm Tanya Eberhart, founder of Brandface, where we help business owners and entrepreneurs differentiate themselves, and we do that through personal branding. And I'm Michael Carr, COO of Brandface. You should know that I was a client before I became a partner in the company, and we're the only comprehensive personal brand building system across the globe. We do Be Bold Branding to teach people how to take the fear out of putting themselves out there, and we do that also through personal branding. And if you have any hesitations, we're here to get that out, and the man that we're fixing to introduce you to is going to help you even further with that. So with that, I'd like to welcome Justin Stoddard to the program. Thank you hey, so much. Hey, you too. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. you I'm a big bet, fan you of bet. yours. We've been trading podcasts for a while now, and it, you know, I'm glad to call you not only an acquaintance, but a friend, Justin, and we're happy to have you here today. So, okay, so recently you wrote a new book, and that's what we want to talk about today because it's brilliant. It's called mm -hmm. The Upstream Model. And we love it because we believe it's positioning with your personal brand, right? That's a lot of what the book's about. You tell us the premise of the book, like where the, you know, the idea came from and why you wrote it. Yeah, 100% um, about positioning. I love, love what you guys do because there's a lot of bad brands out there. And I think there's people that have big potential. They just need a little bit of guidance, need a little bit of help. So what you guys are doing is fantastic. Yeah, the book is very much about positioning. In fact, I, I just had a, a bulk order show up uh, yesterday. and. Love it. Uh, had a couple of people nice. place some bigger orders, nice so they just cover. showed up. So I've got one here to, to show off. But the the book um, really stemmed uh, back from when I was early in my, uh, I would say mid twenties. I was a high end home builder, and I was too young to be to, to be building million dollar homes, but too naive to realize that that was the case. And uh, I'd worked for a very charismatic uh, high end home builder, and he really um, he he moved me up to the company quickly. I was overseeing bigger projects. And, and began to feel pretty confident about the work that I was doing, he began to become very interested in land development to the point where he teamed up with another group. They were developing a lot of land across four states and the high-end home building business, all pre-sold homes, uh, he kind of put in my lap to say, hey, you're in charge of this division of the company, you run with it. And um, obviously 2000, about six, seven, there started to be some kind of choppy waters when it came to the home building industry. And um, my side of the company was solvent because it was all pre-sold clients, right? People were paying for cash of the homes as we built them. Their side was all leveraged, deeply leveraged. And so um, we could kind of see the writing on the wall that they, they weren't going to last. Um, and so I made them an offer at that point to kind of separate the custom home division from that, from that company and carry it forward under my own general contracting license under my own brand. And I thought, Hey, this is going to be okay, right? We're going to be just fine because I've, I'm, comf I'm confident and comfortable building high-end custom homes um, and I'll just go get clients like he got clients. And lo and behold, it wasn't as easy as he made it look. And I think probably at some point, every business out there has run into that. It's like, oh, that's all you do. You just go get clients. And we oversimplify the fact that there's a lot more to it than that. And so we get out, we kind of hang out, you know, um, hang our shingle out. Okay, I'm open for business. And we expect that we're just going to go get business as easy as the company that we worked for in the past. We realize that this is a whole business in and of itself of getting business. You have to have the proper brand. You have to have the, you know, the proper positioning. And I realized that, um, okay, I'm, I'm, this isn't coming as quite as easy as I thought it was going to be. So I thought, okay, where do I go to get new business? And I thought, well, what do other builders do? What did my previous you know, employer do? And I, lo and behold, went and spoke with an architect. And I thought, okay, well, they know that business is coming. And so I walked into an architect's office, terrible branding, terrible positioning, handed them a stack of business cards um, as a solicitor saying, hey, look, I'm a, I'm a good home builder. I began to like spew all over him for 30 seconds to longer, probably <laughs> several minutes, telling him how good I was and how much, um, you know, like how much my clients love me. And here's some pictures of the homes that I built. And by the way, I would love it if you'd refer me thinking that I had just taken on my first salesperson, right? Without ever having to pay him, this architect was going to refer me all his business. I realized that was a pretty crowded space. And I showed up in his life at that point 
not as a solution to a problem, but as a problem in and of itself. You see, he didn't have any shortage of builders to refer. There were plenty of builders that he'd already had deep relationships with that were actually even referring him business. So why would he want to spend more time with me and, and like market me for free, right? Without any value right. back to him. Right. And I realized that that didn't work. I could sense I was emotionally unintelligent enough to walk in and do that, but I was emotionally intelligent enough to realize like that didn't work so well. I could tell that he was not irritated, but he was like, okay, like, like, come on, get it out. So I can put these cards in the garbage can and get on with my day. <laughs> get on with and get back to work. <laughs> and get back to work. And so um, I thought through, okay, what went wrong there? And I realized like, okay, I'd, 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 I had identified the fact that going to an architect was a better idea than going out and trying to just market myself to the whole world. Right? right. That if I could identify some key parties in the marketplace that knew that a transaction was going to happen before those clients ever spoke to a builder, that was a good idea. Mm-hmm. How I approach him, how I went about it was, was, it was incorrect. I, I went in with it all about what's in it for me. And let me tell you all about me and let's talk about me and how you can help me and me and me and me. <laughs> and um, at the end of the day, that's not what he was interested in. I, he, he didn't know me. He didn't care about me. Right. And so uh, my second approach, um, rather than going in uh, unannounced, um, I actually networked into that person, I identified who knew that architect well, and it happened to be an interior designer that I'd worked closely with. And I said, hey, look, um, I feel like I'd really work well with this, you know, with this architect. Would you make an introduction? By the way, here's what I'd like you to say when you introduce him. So it was very strategic about the positioning, very strategic about the, like, the branding and how I showed up so that I didn't have to show up in that meeting talking about me. Someone else had already done it for me. And right. now when I went into that meeting, I could talk about him and what were his desires and his plans and his goals. And most importantly, his challenges so that then I could walk out of that meeting and not just solve problems that he'd already solved, which is another builder. I could solve problems that he hadn't yet solved. And so that was how I, how I survived until 2008, actually 2009, when the whole kind of building market crash. At that point, I did some introspection and realized you know, my passion really is not building homes. It's really building people. And so I set out to find a profession that will allow me to build people, build business, not build homes. So um, that then when I got into the role that I'm in now, where I get to help real estate agents grow their businesses, um, I realized that those same principles apply, that there are people in the marketplace that can help um, real estate agents more than just doing online leads, more than even their own personal sphere. Because the reality is their personal sphere is great, But how many of them, like how many of those 200 to 300 people are going to refer on an annual basis? And how many people are you spending time with that aren't going to refer? So if you could identify people in the marketplace that could refer and show up as a peer, as a mentor, as opposed to as a solicitor, now all of a sudden you have this new flowing, warm referral business, not cold lead business, but warm referral business from people that can actually help you. So that's that's how it then kind of germinated into now helping all well-paid professionals position themselves differently and be in a spot to where their brand really matters. Um, and, and again, uh, kind of parlaying into the work that you guys do, it's, it's, you know, that's what you guys do, which is phenomenal how you help people show up um, branded better position, better, you know, for success. So it, it really kind of feeds into what you guys do. That is so fantastic, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and now that you brought that into a, into a, a book, got it concise for everybody, right. It was a great book. It is a great book. Um, so, so let me parlay into that a little bit because there's also, there's a lot more things happening to us, right? Uh, when you're talking about real estate agents and things like that, there's a shift in the industry and, uh, the industry is attempting in a lot of ways to make us order takers or, you know, big box brokerages, I buyer movements, uh, things like that, uh, yeah. trying to, trying to really effectively just say, okay, agents be the order taker. You know, even down to Zillow, uh, you know, you, you got your contacts under, they're all the same. How do we stand out about this? Uh, and it's almost as if they want to make us obsolete. Your book addresses this problem uh, in, in yeah. much the same way as you're talking about, right? Yeah, it does, Michael. It's a great, it's a great um, question to kind of lead in that uh, there's no doubt that big tech has, it has all well-paid professionals, service-based professionals in their crosshairs, Right. They, they're really good at, at, at writing algorithms. And so what they do naturally is that they'll step in, they'll write an algorithm and they will um, take out a well-paid professional and replace it with a customer service representative, right? That isn't paid well. And they take the difference of what that well-paid professional and that customer service representative got paid and they discount it to the customer, right? So the customer is now intrigued. And, and then they take that 
at scale and they can create a great business out of it, right? Don't blame them. It's a great business model. But how do we compete against that, right? We're not going to out tech big tech. Like the reality is Zillow blog feeds and posts will always get better SEO than ours, right? That's just the reality of it. So how do you actually beat that and win that? And I think the answer is always we have to get better, right? There's no, uh, we can't, you know, trick consumers for long and say like, oh, that like they're not any good. The reality is like they offer a service and they offer it at a discounted price. So right. we have to get better. We have to not only improve our value proposition, number one, but we, then we have to get to the customer sooner before big tech. And you're like, how do you get there before big tech? Well, the upstream model teaches that is right. that, for example, two real estate agents, very similar to how when I was a home builder, I looked upstream to an architect. I've kind of done a lot of research with well-paid professionals in other industries like CPAs, like tax advisors, like financial um, advisors, um, like attorneys. And I've interviewed them to say, how often when you're in the day-to-day -day conversations with your clients, are you identifying the fact that your customers are going to have a real estate need in their future? And they're like, yeah, like regularly. I'm like, great, that's amazing. Now, how often are you referring that to a real estate agent was my follow-up question. And they're like, yeah, rarely. rarely. So like, Whoa, so you're telling me that you are kind of a fortune teller. You can actually, you know that people have real estate needs, but you're not speaking up to refer it to a realtor. Why not? Because there's really a big lead, not just a lead opportunity, there's a referral opportunity there, right? If we can solve the mystery of why they're not passing that referral, what's keeping them from doing that? Then we can really start to create a model that really helps real estate agents and all these upstream partners, some of which I mentioned there, work closely together to, you know, to be able to start to refer each other. And um, that's, that's kind of, kind of get, you know, getting into more of the meat of the book as far as um, how you actually approach these people, why they aren't referring you currently or anybody currently, how do you change your identity and your positioning to where they see you not as a solicitor, but as a peer or even a mentor and a leader that they need in their business. Mm -hmm. Right. So all of these things, Michael, back to your question, when you start to take, for example, um, a wealth advisor, a like a financial advisor, they're also in the crosshairs of big tech. They're also trying to find ways to differentiate themselves from the online portals that are having people, you know, kind of manage their own money portfolio. They're trying to stand out from those, just like real estate agents are trying to stand out from, you know, all the red fins and kind of Zillow offers of the world. And so those two parties together, once they start to realize like, okay, I'm not just going to refer you because I know you like you or I trust you, right? We, that's all good. And that will happen over time. But if you could actually refer each other because you need each other, because the, because the real estate agent is now gathering it, like financial intelligence from the financial advisor that allows them to be more valuable to their clients and act as a wealth advisor for someone's real estate portfolio, and a wealth advisor could now be gathering like customized intelligent insight from the real estate agent to where they're now showing up, looking at their whole portfolio, not just their stock portfolio. Both parties, it's very hard now for algorithms to be written to, to go against that type of value offering. Right. And you're that able personality, to- That personality, that personal link. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's yes. right. I love that. And, so and I love how this segues into the next question because it matches up perfectly. I actually pulled a little excerpt um, from a quote um, out of your book and you say agents must not only improve their value proposition to the consumer, but they must also improve their ability to communicate this value to those they serve and desire to serve. They must do this with such clarity that the consumer can easily tell the difference and recognize the value in choosing them over a low paid technology offering or another agent, for goodness sake, right? Mm. Anything like that. So, you know, yeah. that's right up our alley, of course, because we're all about differentiation and value. And what I love about your, your upstream model is it doesn't just tell, you know, the other, your potential customers, what sets you apart, right? You're talking about going farther upstream and having people refer you, having not just anybody refer you to clients, but first of all, you've got to know what clients are you trying to attract? Yeah. 
And then what partners are the right ones to ask to refer you? Because it has to be this, you know, round peg fits in the round hole, right? It's got to all fit together. In your opinion, you know, what are some things that agents can do to make sure that they do those things, obviously, and they remain a vital and necessary part of the process? Um, And this oftentimes when people say, well, how do I get started with the upstream model? Mm -hmm. Um, And it's when you really start to look at your role beyond just how can I serve people in real estate, but what's the next concern that people have either right before or right after a transaction? Like what are they going to need next or what would make their life easier, better, make them more wealthy? Like what are the things that you as a professional are not able to do? It's just not, it's not what you're trained to do. But what would add such value to your clients that would make you really stand out if you were able to offer that? And I think that's kind of where, you know, is, is oftentimes a great place to start because people can really start to take a look at how, um, like what would actually be valuable to my clients. This isn't just a ploy to, to give some fake value to your client, to, to your clients about a CPA so that you get referrals from that CPA, right? That's super superficial. And it's not going to work. You actually have to right. say, what do my clients no actually need? Right? What do my clients actually need? Right. And then at that point, it's like, okay, how do I then approach that professional in the industry and say, okay, um, how do I integrate what you have to offer into my client experience? Even if it's just passing a referral, or maybe there's tidbits that I can share of data that you're giving me on a regular basis that I can kind of show that I have value there. And then that's a great segue into referring you. Yeah. Again, I think it's identifying first and foremost, what's good for the client and mm. then starting to make those, those key alliances with those partners that can help make your client experience better and vice versa, right? To where you can tell that CPA, how valuable would it be if you were to have not just this automated Zestimate stuff that you can get online about the value of somebody's home, but how valuable would it be to actually get real data about somebody's home, about somebody's area, about the projected you know, appreciation? Like how much, how valuable would that be? And as I've done these interviews, I've uncovered that stuff like that, and that's just one small example, can be very valuable to these other professionals that makes their client experience great as well. And, and, and the beauty of all of that, speaking of positioning, is that if I'm giving that upstream partner data about real estate, guess what? That CPA is now talking about real estate to their clients. And guess what? When they uncover like, oh yeah, we're thinking about selling a couple of our rental properties. Guess who's who's position themselves right in the middle of that conversation you have you're in the person's brain they're sharing information that you gave to them for free so naturally you're going to come up in conversation and be the natural referral for that cpa absolutely and And this brings brings to mind uh justin uh, a client of ours um a real estate agent in new york her brand identifier is transition agent and she's been working for years with seniors uh and they're transitioning from, you know, a a lifestyle that maybe a home they've lived in for 35 plus years and all this stuff in their home and they're transitioning to downsize or perhaps into assisted living. And, and at that point in their life, it's a major transition. You know, she likes to say, it's not just a transaction, it's a transition. And so as case in point of what you were just talking about, she aligned herself with a counselor to bring in, to talk to somebody before a big move like that, because she said, this move is so much more than, it affects so much more than just the person who's moving. It affects the entire family. She also aligned with a, an, an expert organizer who come in and help decide, okay, where do these things go? All the stuff in the home, what do we do with all of this? And that's exactly what you're talking about is, you know, she's a great example of that because she has aligned with those people. And now who's going to refer, you know, who are they going to refer when it comes to real estate? I love it. It's such a great example. We've got kind of several upstream um, students, people that are really kind of digging and going deep on this, this topic that are, have uncovered the same thing. Like I really want to serve that community. They have needs. Right. Um, And if I can bring other people to the table that can service them to help get the job that I'm supposed to do uh, be, you know, to be done better and be able to get a referral and pass a referral to these other professionals, that senior is better taken care of than having to go online. I mean, like, where are they going to get this information from, right? Right. Um, and it's not exactly. vetted, uh, right. you know, when you don't know. So um, I really love this. And uh, you, you also incorporate in your book 
not just not just uh, you break it down blue collar white collar uh yeah. which is just just a just a way to say okay you know in your upstream model that you also have other people that you could go to like uh you have your um your your workers if you will like your paint mm -hmm. professionals and, and people landscape, landscape professionals yeah. that see this um that and, and they notice hey why are you cleaning up well we're thinking about selling and we know we need we need to spruce the place up well if you've aligned yourself perfectly and then on the back side of all of those transactions everybody you know every house we sell somebody asks me hey who can paint it who can do this who can do that and i've got my list of guys that i trust that i know that they'll go in there and they'll do the job correctly and and uh, the way it's supposed to be so it's uh, it's it's just it can shoot out like an octopus and you know, eight different directions and you and and you're feeding your sphere of influence too, because we talk about, you know, your sphere of influence has a natural attrition rate. And if you don't feed it, then it's just like anything else, it'll die. And uh, and so this is I really love this premise so much. Uh, I love what you said there, Michael, you're right. I mean, and from your example, right, being being, you know, such a big name in the auction space, you, you realize that there's when people acquire property like their needs are just starting to be fulfilled, right? Like right. there's all kinds of stuff that comes after that. Um, and if you can, again, yeah, align yourself with people that can add value both on the financial side, kind of the white collar side, as well as on the, on the you know, blue collar side, like the side of, um, you know, where people are actually gonna need help servicing the house, taking care of the structure. Um, and you, you feed those people, mm -hmm. right? And also train those people. Oftentimes I've found that those, those professionals on either side are one or two questions away. Like if they're not already uncovering the fact that they're going to have a real estate move in the future, they're one or two questions away, right? For example, just like you said, right? With the painter, oh, you're painting. Uh, tell me how come you're painting? You know, you guys going to be here for a while? Are you, oh no, we're actually thinking about, you know, sprucing up and selling it. Oftentimes people will make those decisions before ever consulting, you know, with a real estate agent, sometimes spend money unnecessarily. But right. if you get, a, you know, the right painter who you're giving great business to, and you simply train them on what to say when they step into those, you know, environments. All of a sudden, you've got a salesperson out there now that's more than happy to do it because he is getting paid, right? Because right. you're feeding him great business, and it, it just creates this amazing, you know, this amazing synergy. Well, and you know, you've you've done something else with this book, also. You you know, we talk about uh, you, it's hard to calculate the cost of confusion, and especially mm -hmm. for people who are getting started in the business, right? Where am I going to get my first lead? Where am I going to get? And and this really gives them a focus on on where in their sphere of influence to start doing that, and it's not as far off like you just pointed out as it seems, right? When we when we first get in, we see all these trees and we're like trees, not forest. We can't really differentiate the two, right? But you're right. You're, a lot of times it's only a couple of framing questions with your contractors, with your sphere of influence, with your upstream that that sort of helps them also navigate that. Uh, and, uh, and, and of course the financial advisors are incredible because they, what does real estate do? Real estate builds wealth. And so do they in other avenues. And so it's just a great synergy that you can do with so in so many directions. But like you said, you're only a question or two, a lot of times away from so many people. You no, know, oftentimes, um, you know, Michael, I, I find that people want to be the person that says I work by referral only, right? Mm -hmm. Word of mouth. That's how I do it. But the reality is that the the 250 people, like I said, they've got their arms around. Only a you know 10% or 5% of those people are really actively able to or willing to give referrals. Even if they love you, that's just not in their DNA to like be like, hey, do you have a good realtor? There's a few of them in there that are, and so it's it's taking a warm referral business model and making it scalable because now you can you know you you focus on five people, 10 people, 15 people, where you used to be focusing on 250 and right. those people produce because all day long in their job, they're dealing with your next client, right? It's like they're having to go out of their way and remember that, oh, when my aunt speaks up and says she's going to sell, I need to, I need to recommend my realtor. Like the chances of that happening are pretty low. Like you've got to love on people a lot a and lot. be right. spend a lot of time and energy and effort to, to, to get, to get that mind space. But you apply the amazing principles of branding that you guys teach and just ap apply it to a, to a smaller audience that, that can actually help you in a big way. And now all of a sudden you can really start to scale this, right? You can actually start to spend more time with your clients, more time with your family because you're not chasing, you know, the masses. 
Right. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, you say something else in your book. It's 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 an old saying, right? If you keep doing what you're doing, we're going to keep getting what we get, right? Like, yeah. and so that's an old saying, right? That you say, but you say something different about that. You take it a step further, right? And you say, no, you're not. You'll actually get less and less and less and <laughs> less so over true. the years, yeah. right? It, you think you attribute that to what we're talking about, or you think it's the, mostly disruptors in the space, or technology, or just a big combination of all of that. Yeah, I mean, I think there there will always be disruption. I mean, if you look at, the, you know, the the like the radio disrupted something. You know, the TV right. disrupted the radio. I, you know, oftentimes when people like don't agree with me on that concept, I, I say, okay, what if we were let's rewind to night the year nineteen seventy, and you were fortunate to have a last name that ended or that started with with double A, like Aaron was your last name. <laughs> like, phone book it, strategy. It, that's right, and it was Aaron Realty Group or triple, or, and, and and if not, you came up with a strategy of like, okay, we are triple A Realty, and why did you do that? Because first in the phone book. The phone it's book. like right. you named your company that because that's how people search for stuff, right? right? And it's like, if if that was your model back then, it may have worked. But today, like, it doesn't matter if you have right. AAA or AA or like, it just doesn't matter, right? So the same person doing that same strategy of, hey, we're still AAA realty company, you're going to get less and less and less over time as things change and ind industries get disrupted. And so I think that, yeah, this concept, exactly what you said, Michael, is this concept of Doing what you've always done will get you what you've always gotten. No, it won't. Not in a not in a quickly changing world. You're gonna get less. You have to just to stay where you're at. You've got to be innovating and moving forward. And if you really want to innovate and move forward, you've got to look around to say, are my models still relevant, or do I need to adopt a new model that's gonna get me there faster? Right. Yep. And and, yep. and speaking of adopting a new model. You also say some, <laughs> I, this is my favorite quote in the it's book. It's mine too, actually. Some people yeah. have been in the, that have been in the business for 10 years have actually been in the business for one year, 10 different times. And, and we could not agree more Fantastic because, because what happens in the marketing frenzy out there is, is, okay, let me see what works today that will work here today. And no, let me change my whole, like the way I'm presenting myself and everything else next year. And then the next year, this changes instead of just focusing in and saying, what kind of life do I want? Who do I want to work with every day? Who can I best help? What's different about me that they're going to appreciate that's going to be meaningful and helpful to them and building a brand and then setting out down the road, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, it's that. just like slinging it up against the wall and seeing what sticks. And that's the world, you know, that I was raised in through the media, which is exactly why we're doing what we do today right. of helping people focus. Yeah, so boy, so yeah. powerful, you know, at a time and an era when, when there is, massive amounts of distraction right um like what a what a fantastic you know service you guys are, are offering to people to really help them again take the fundamentals the reality is people want to do business with somebody that comes referred right somebody that that someone else can put their name on and say yes this person's really good and ideally not just you know five star reviews that's that's good but if it's somebody that you know it's like oh yeah hey this person's good we use them ourselves right and we're like you and you'll like this person. And here's one thing to be leery of. Like you can get that kind of feedback and, and, and you're exactly right. Like that's the fundamental of how humans like to operate is like eliminate as much risk as possible. I want to make a good decision here with as little time as possible on, on the research. That's why we flock to referrals, right? It's like, Hey, this person can vouch for it. They're like me, they get me. So this must be a good opportunity for me as well. And to be able to, to hone in and, and go back to that principle, right? Like you guys said, like, go back to like what actually works as opposed to all these, you know, shiny objects every other day, um, go back to that and, and really be who uh, and expose it and share who you really are, what makes you unique, man, that just, again, it grounds people back in the reality of human nature of how we operate, how we work and um, allows people to, to cut out all the fat, right? Cut out all the, all the stuff that causes them Absolutely. to waste so much time. Not only are they wasting time on chasing the masses, but now they're wasting time on how they're going to get to the masses, right? I mean, it's just like, like a problem compound on top of a problem. Yeah, it yeah, is. It, it is. really it is. is. And you know, I think that I think that one of the things about people too, uh, to to give our, our future clients and customers their due, um, they don't want to have the situation to go bad. Like they, yeah, you know what I mean. Like they don't want to have to fire an agent. You know what I mean. And so they 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 have trepidation about 
uh, the cold call to an agent because what if it doesn't work out? Now this agent's going to be hounding me all the time. I don't want to be bothered. This guy's going to have my cell phone number. I, you know, I want to choose this guy instead of this guy. And then I got to be in the position to say, no, I didn't choose you. Like there's a lot of trepidation in the field like that. Yeah. And when you go into, when you differentiate yourself and, and you have a, a way of standing out against your competitors and then to take that further into your model, into your upstream, that you're able to introduce yourself to those peripheral people in the same way that you're going to stand out to your customer. And then they're able to refer you. Then you, you've sort of eliminated a whole lot of fear, even if it's un, like unwarranted fear, it's still there. Mm-hmm. People still have it, right? Ben, what Benjamin Franklin said, what, what pain hath caused us to fears that have never happened, right? It's, most of our fears are up here. But, but people don't overcome that when they're just trying to sell a house. It's the, you know, it's the biggest purchase they've ever made. It's their biggest wealth builder. And they don't want to be caught in a position where they have to do that. And if that, that somebody they already trust knows you and how you differentiate, know, has a good relationship with you, says, hey, this is the guy to call. This is the girl to call. This is the person that's going to take care of you. Then you cut away a lot of that problem right off the bat. Yeah. You so, sure have. You yeah. sure have. Awesome. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to leave us before you have a final question for Justin, I'm going to leave us with the men in the audience are going to really like this. I'm going to leave you with a sports analogy and a fishing analogy. Okay. Awesome. So, so sports, <laughs> I look at it this way. I heard what you say about the basics of basics. I always used to call those as your layups and your foul shots. People mm-hmm. don't forget. You can't do too many of them. There's no such thing. Go back to the core. Who are you? It, we always like to say every great brand and also would apply to positioning yourself upstream should answer five questions. What sets you apart? Who do you serve? How do you serve them? What qualifies you to serve them? And how does it make their life better? Yeah. And that last question is powerful. And that's really what your book's all about is how do you make that? How does it make your life better? Now, the yeah. fishing analogy, I love the upstream. Michael's just dying over here. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he loves so, you. <laughs> the fishing upstream versus downstream, right? Instead yeah. of being at the in, at the bottom of the stream along, like you said, in, in your book, it was standing there with all the other fish moves with your lines cast in the water, right? In the water. Go talk to the hatcheries. Go talk to the guy stocking the pond, it. right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> that's your upstream. And that's where you want to be. So there's your fishing and your sports. And I love it. Go to the yeah. mouth of the river. That's right. I love it. <laughs> mouth of the Fantastic river. Fantastic analogies. I love it. Everyone, that just finally hit home for every, everybody listening. That <laughs> It is really, really that simple. And uh, sure your book is. has is fantastic at this. So tell everybody how they can reach you, how they can get a copy of the book. Yeah, um, it's, you bet. Uh, it's funny, I actually just had a bulk order show up. I had a couple of groups uh, order it. So I just, I have a bunch here to kind of show off. So I don't know if the light, you can see it from that. But yeah, the Upstream Model, um, easy to get if you just go to um, upstreammodel.com forward slash book. Again, upstreammodel.com forward slash book. Um, I put a, a below cost offer there and there's some upgrades to, you know, in order to get some uh, kind of the audio offering and actually an interview with a financial advisor that actually has the financial advisor saying, boy, if, it, if a real estate agent would do that, I would, I would start sending referrals all day long. So there's some cool stuff there that I've kind of added in as a kind of an audio upgrade there if you're interested in that. Um, but yeah, that's, and then just to learn more about me, um, kind of, the, I, I do a blog post a couple times a week, um, have a podcast, as you know, so that's just at uh, Justin Stoddart dot com. That's a T at the end. Oftentimes people put a D, but Justin Stoddart.com. Uh, you can get access to all that content. So anyway, and I'm such fans of you guys. I absolutely love everything that you've said here is just so on point uh, well, with helping people to really too. we are and, and congratulations. I saw on your book cover you are already that's already a best selling book. So congratulations. Yeah. That's thank you. Thank you. You know it's in today's world you can kind of like work the algorithms and systems and kind of get like bestseller status and kind of some obscure categories. I was excited to see that in, in small business and small business and, and small business and entrepreneurship, and we actually held it uh, for a period of time in, in kind of a couple different countries. So anyway, that was fun to see. It was nice after you put in all the work, at least some people like it, right? <laughs> Good accomplishment. It is. It is. So thank you both. Yeah. And, and, and uh, to, to everybody out there that's going to be watching this, listen, if you have any questions about your brand, uh, if you want to learn more about us, head to discussyourbrand.com. That's discuss 
yourbrand.com and you can schedule a free session with our team to just talk about branding and or we can talk about Justin and the upstream model. We'd love to and do a warm lead right over to him uh, because it fits. The symmetry is so great. Yeah, it uh, really is. With what we do. Uh, so discussyourbrand.com. We highly recommend the book and recommend Justin. So, yes. and also guys, if uh, we'd like to invite you to our Facebook group called Build Your Real Estate Brand, uh, you'll find content and engagement there that you won't find anywhere else. And we're gonna be promoting Justin's book there too. So yeah. our team is standing by to open the gates, click that join button and come on in. It's Build Your Real Estate Brand. Yep. And when Justin, obviously we wanna thank you for coming on uh, as always, and uh, you're a great friend. And uh, we to many years of friendship uh, That's right. and, and helping uh, real estate agents and other entrepreneurs grow their business and, and, and have a better life. You know, we we that's why we do this. It's about prosperity. Right. And when we say prosperity here, we're not just talking about money. We're talking about the 360 of an abundant life. And we know at Brand Face that prosperity favors the bold. Uh, so we say be bold, especially with your brand <laughs> and with your upstream model. And uh, and so thank you so much for coming. I love it. I love it. You guys are making such a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, Justin. All right, guys, we'll see you next time on Be Bold.